This is Louise Pedersen, a man whose heart is shattered and tears are streaming down his face. His girlfriend, Fernanda Maciel, who was seven months pregnant, has been missing for several days, and the chances of finding her alive are slim. The most chilling part of this story is the man consoling Louise. His name is Felipe Rojas, a friend of the family who was initially not considered a suspect in the case. However, as the days passed and the police gathered more evidence, the horror of the situation became clear. The cause of this tragic event had always been right in front of them. Let's step back in time to February 10th, 2018, to a little commune named Conchalí in northern Chile. This is where 21-year-old Fernanda Maciel lived with her mother and siblings in a house on Puntiagudo Street. What's particularly important about this moment is that Fernanda was seven months pregnant and eagerly anticipating the arrival of her daughter with her boyfriend, Louise Pedersen, who was 36 years old at the time. Fernanda had a job as a waitress at a restaurant located in the Santiago airport. But on that specific Saturday, February 10th, which happened to be her day off, she chose to hang out with a neighbor by the name of Rodrigo Olivares. He accompanied her to get fake eyelashes, and then he drove her home. That day, Fernanda's mother noticed something unusual. Fernanda, typically outgoing and talkative, was quieter than usual. Instead of engaging in conversation during dinner, she was using her phone for an extended period. This continued until 5 p.m., when Fernanda made a decision to leave her home to visit a friend. She didn't provide many details, as she was only going to be a few meters away from her house. Although it wasn't a long trip, and she didn't travel to another part of the city, it turned out to be the last time anyone saw Fernanda Maciel alive. This event left the entire country questioning what might have happened to her and her unborn daughter. During that period, Fernanda's family was especially attentive to her because of her pregnancy. As the hours passed without any word from Fernanda, not even a phone call, their concern grew. Eventually, they made the decision to report her as a missing person to the police hoping to find answers to this unsettling situation. As time went on, news about the disappearance started to circulate on television and on social media. There were various speculations about the nature of Fernanda's disappearance. These speculations ranged from suggesting she was involved in illegal activities like drug trafficking to implying that she had a secret lover and had run away with him. There were even claims that she might have fled to neighboring Argentina in an attempt to escape from her boyfriend. To make matters worse, as the media publicized the case and continued spreading these far-fetched theories, numerous self-proclaimed psychics emerged, claiming to have had visions regarding Fernanda's whereabouts. Adding even more unnecessary confusion to the situation, a couple said they saw Fernanda in Argentina juggling at a traffic light to make money. This was such a big deal that Fernanda's mom went all the way there because the Chilean police couldn't investigate in Argentina. But despite all these efforts, they were looking in the wrong places, not realizing that the answer to the mystery was incredibly close to home. At a certain point, the investigation started honing in on a supposed connection between Fernanda and the world of drug trafficking. This suspicion arose because she was acquainted with Alexander Oyarfun Perez a person with a known history of drug-related activities. According to witnesses, they had seen Fernanda at the man's house just a day before she went missing. This detail sparked theories that Fernanda might have been involved in a transaction involving valuable substances, putting her safety in jeopardy. Another theory emerged because of Fernanda's previous relationship with her ex-boyfriend who was rumored to be associated with a group involved in illicit activities. Fernanda and her ex-boyfriend maintained a friendly relationship, which caused a lot of friction with his current girlfriend, Francesca Orellana. It's said that Francesca's jealousy reached extreme levels when she discovered Fernanda was pregnant. She went so far as to make threats fueled by her belief that her boyfriend might be the father of Fernanda's child. Fernanda had some friends who might not have been the best influence. Starting in 2017, she started dating a guy named Louise Pedersen, who worked as a taxi driver. He also had a 14-year-old son. Fernanda's mom didn't really approve of this relationship because he was 15 years older than Fernanda, and she didn't like the big age gap between them. In cases like these, law enforcement often begin by investigating the victim's partner, as they suspect a potential connection to strong emotions or violent behavior. 
This happened when the authorities started looking closely into Louise. A close friend of Fernanda's informed the police that the couple had been having intense arguments recently. Fernanda had confided in her friend, sharing that her boyfriend had started to act aggressively towards her after she became pregnant. Louise admitted that this violence was driven by jealousy, but he claimed that he never physically assaulted her. As a result, the police started to dig deeper into the couple's circle of friends. They found out that the relationship was troubled from both sides, with people witnessing Fernanda's jealousy issues and even recalling a time when she angrily scratched his car. Nevertheless, the police were still considering Pedersen as a potential suspect. They questioned him several times during the period when Fernanda was missing. In October 2018, they obtained a search warrant for his home. During the search, they discovered a hidden compartment in Pedersen's apartment. The police thoroughly examined his residence for a day but found no incriminating evidence. The police dropped their investigation into Pedersen after verifying through security cameras that he and his car were nowhere near Fernanda's house at the time of the crime. With Pedersen's innocence becoming more evident, the police had few remaining leads related to Fernanda. They briefly considered a taxi driver who had driven Fernanda from her workplace at the Santiago airport to her home. Friends had mentioned a suspicious level of trust between them. This lead was quickly abandoned when they found that the taxi driver had been on vacation in a town 60 miles away. This distance made his involvement in Fernanda's disappearance impossible. With Fernanda's family, the media, and the public demanding justice, a breakthrough suddenly emerged. A neighbor living near Fernanda's house, where she was last seen on February 10, came forward with a vital piece of evidence after eight months of Fernanda's disappearance. He shared a recording from his security camera, capturing Fernanda walking along the street, heading towards an intersection around 5.17 p.m. that day. What made this significant was the absence of any further security camera sightings of Fernanda after this point. This raised the possibility that someone may have been waiting for her in that area. The police continued their investigation at the location seen in the security camera footage. They determined that the only place she could have been heading based on the footage was an old warehouse, which was used to store different types of fabric. They found that this warehouse was maintained by a 24-year-old man named Felipe Rojas who happened to be a friend of Fernanda's. Felipe had appeared at the first public statement made by Fernanda's family, where he was captured on camera consoling Fernanda's boyfriend as he gave a tearful statement to the press. However, he was not considered a suspect at the time. The discovery of the warehouse led the police to believe that it might have been Fernanda's intended destination. During questioning, Rojas appeared calm and cooperative, explaining that he had known Fernanda for about 10 years. He mentioned their plans to meet at the warehouse. When asked if he had seen Fernanda that afternoon, he responded that he had waited for her, but she never arrived. To substantiate his claim, security camera footage showed Rojas leaving the warehouse on a bike and riding to Fernanda's house to check on her. Fernanda's mother confirmed that her daughter hadn't responded to messages and wasn't at home. The police investigation took a significant turn when they confirmed that the meeting between Rojas and Fernanda had indeed been planned by both parties. The police began to consider two main scenarios. Either Fernanda had disappeared mysteriously along the small path heading to the warehouse, or Rojas was not telling the truth. Common sense seemed to suggest that one of these possibilities was more likely than the other. As the investigation continued, a search warrant has been obtained to thoroughly investigate the warehouse. Once they finally got into the building, they spent hours and hours examining every nook and cranny, looking for any signs that might implicate Rojas in Fernanda's disappearance. But no matter how hard they looked, they couldn't find a single piece of evidence suggesting that Fernanda had ever been there. We need to remember that by this time, many months had passed since Fernanda disappeared. The police were frustrated, and it seemed like they didn't know what to do next. They began to assign fewer officers to the case, and the searches in the area became less frequent. It felt like the police had given up on finding Fernanda and her baby. In 2019, nearly a year after Fernanda's disappearance, there was still no progress in the case. However, things took a turn when human remains were found in Huchuraba in March 2019, sparking hope. 
Sadly, DNA analysis revealed they weren't Fernandez. This led to frustration and a protest by her family and community, urging authorities to intensify their efforts, especially in investigating Rojas and the warehouse, where many suspected he was involved. By this point, five separate searches had already been conducted at the warehouse over the course of a year, and nothing significant had ever been discovered. Fernandez's family sought help from forensic expert Carlos Gutierrez. However, just before he could join, the authorities conducted another search and unearthed a hidden cemented area. Tragically, on July 23, 2019, after 500 days of searching, they found Fernanda Maciel and her unborn daughter's remains. Felipe Rojas was apprehended as the primary and sole suspect in the case. The discovery of Fernanda's remains in the warehouse was a turning point in the investigation, but it also raised some troubling questions. Many people, including Louise Pedersen, were concerned about the security camera footage. They noticed that the videos available to the public seemed edited with cuts and missing parts. This made them wonder why the full, unedited footage from the day of the events wasn't shared with everyone involved in the case. Furthermore, the security camera footage seemed to suggest that Fernanda's interactions with Rojas were always recorded. These discrepancies and unanswered questions made many people skeptical about how the authorities were handling the case. Despite these doubts, it seemed like the truth was finally coming to light as the facts became harder to conceal. A major breakthrough happened when Rojas's ex-girlfriend revealed something shocking. She said that Rojas had confessed to her about what happened to Fernanda. According to her, Rojas not only admitted to being involved, but also claimed he was solely responsible for the crime. Rojas told her that Fernanda slipped and hit her head on the edge of a table or chair. She then started convulsing, so he wrapped her in some cloth and made a hole in the ground where he buried her. She further explained that Rojas had confessed to taking Fernanda's cell phone, formatting it, and then selling it at the fair located near the warehouse. To substantiate these claims, the authorities possessed evidence in the form of a flash drive. Supposedly, it contained footage of Rojas riding his bike to the street where he sold Fernanda's phone. This sale was also captured by the security cameras of a nearby hardware store where Rojas was seen buying a large bag of cement, presumably with the money he had obtained from selling Fernanda's phone. There seemed to be something quite unusual about the sudden appearance of these additional recordings. One might argue that these new recordings showing Rojas on his bike would have been crucial evidence if obtained earlier. The sudden appearance of the flash drive raised many eyebrows and seemed rather suspicious. They claimed it had been stored in a criminal case evidence box at the station, which left people questioning how such a crucial piece of evidence could go unnoticed for so long. It presented two possibilities. Either the investigators were incredibly negligent, or there was something more to this case that we don't know about. After the shocking revelations, the Santiago Prosecutor's Office, along with Carlos Gutierrez, and Fernanda's family collected evidence to charge 25-year-old Felipe Rojas. The trial had some delays, but on April 11, 2023, the court found Rojas guilty and sentenced him to life imprisonment, the harshest penalty in Chile, with a mandatory 40-year term and no parole or probation. Rojas had a minimal presence during the trial, leaving his motivations unclear. However, Evidence and his past violent behavior suggest premeditated actions, likely driven by a long-standing obsession with Fernanda Maciel, 